Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And we've got some showers out there this morning. We're still tracking a little bit of rain. Most of that comes to an end this afternoon. Your forecast is coming up. And of course, we are keeping a watchful eye on the roads. What you can expect for your morning commute coming up in a few minutes. A chilling warning from Russia about the potential for World War III. At MBC's Faith Abu Bay in Washington, the latest in Russia's war in Ukraine coming up. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is April 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, interesting Monday with all the rain and those roadways. That's right. And a few showers out there this morning. And uh, Justin joins us now. Justin, after keeping an eye on radar myself yesterday, it looked like the rain was very hit or miss. It I'm was. guessing the rainfall totals were very hit or miss as well. They're all over the map, yeah. uh, quite literally. Uh, we have some big totals. Some people didn't get much at all. It's just the way it goes with these kind of systems. But we've still got some showers out there this morning. We're still going to see a little bit more rain here and there throughout the morning time and then by the afternoon. Maybe some sun. It was a cool day yesterday. All that cloud cover and rain kept those temperatures way down. Here's a look at the radar this morning. We've got some light stuff moving in around San Antonio. This is really light. Shouldn't cause a lot of issues. Slightly heavier showers as you get out towards Uvalde, Hondo, down towards Pearsall this morning. A little closer look there is some of that shower activity that's diving south. So there are going to be some wet roads along I-35 so far here in town. The roads are still some places where there's some puddles, but the roads aren't overly wet, so to speak. Uh, but again, there is potential for a few more showers as we go throughout the uh, morning commute. 57 Fredericksburg, 56 Kerrville, 59 Uvalde, 63 Pleasanton. It's a cool morning. You, you may want your coat. As you go out the door this morning, 54 Bernie stage 57, as I said, in comfort 56 in Bandera. Here's our forecast, our case at case at 12 hour forecast by 7 a.m. 30% chance of rain. We're going to keep that small chance in there through the lunch hour, although we're going to drop chances just a little bit 20% 64 noontime. And we're only making it up to about 70 degrees today. That's it. Cloud cover and that potential for rain and cloud cover is going to keep up, uh, keep us down quite a bit. Northeasterly winds will be 10 to 15 miles per hour. We had some issues on the roadways yesterday with all the rain. Let's see how things are looking so far this morning. It's early yet. Uh, but are things pretty quiet, Steve? Uh, so far, so good, Justin. Yeah, we did have some major problems along I-10 yesterday involving two 18-wheelers uh, that caused some major slowdowns and closures along the I-10 corridor. Of course, right now, as you can see from these TransGuide cameras, it is looking pretty calm and quiet. So give yourself some time this morning. As Justin mentioned, some puddles still may remain on the road. Damp roads uh, encountered that. I encountered that myself traveling in I-10 this morning coming into work. But take it easy this morning. You can see there's no need to rush out the door but just give yourself that time that you need. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because what we are picking up is a stall right now. This is pretty much the only issue we are seeing at this hour. Loop 410 eastbound, Advanced Jackson Road. Watch out whenever you see those stalled vehicles. But as we get that wide view of the metro area, thankfully, no slowdowns, no closures to report just yet. But the morning is still young. And as I mentioned, no need to rush out the door. We are seeing that everything looks pretty much green across the board with the exception of Bulverde, a 30 minute drive time to downtown. Downtown San Antonio from 281 in those southbound lanes. So an area that you may want to just drive carefully through, but we are seeing some quiet roads this morning. But you can see from this shot at Transguide 410 at Perrin Vital 410 at Bandera. It does look like the morning is moving nice and easy, but of course we're going to have some updates right here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Well, keep. Thank you very much, Stephen. More rain fell in the area overnight, adding to yesterday's much needed showers. Sarah Costa joins us now with more as you get ready to head out the door this morning. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, much needed rain. It was actually really nice to kind of relax and see that rain come in. But our KSAT crew, they were out and about last night. And for many people, the showers were a welcome sight, but it did lead to some problems on the roads around town last night. Heavy rain forced some roads to close across the metro area, including in the almost park area. This video is from Jones Maltzberger and Bassey Road. The gates leading into the park were closed. Warning drivers to turn around. You can see that water rushing over over the road right there on your screen. Still, the showers were a welcome sight for many of the people that our crews talked to. They close that when it drizzles. No matter what happens, they close the basin. <laughs> Like she was saying, usually out of a precaution, just take a look at your screen. This is Bear County. They have a live interactive map of that shows which low water crossings are closed. And for the most part, you can see most all of them are open except for one. There's it's like in the Cibolo Creek 
far east county and one on the southwest side. But like Justin Horn and Stephen Cavasso saying really no problems out there this morning. Those two closures that are low water crossing areas most likely closed out of precaution. So and don't forget to download our Weather Authority app. You can track the radar live, watch forecasts, and keep an eye on everything you need to know and just keep it right here for Justin's full forecast in just a few minutes. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Now to Russia's attacks in Ukraine and the new warning from the Kremlin to the U.S. and NATO allies about the risk for a nuclear war. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, Russia's foreign minister raising new alarm, saying the conflict in Ukraine could further escalate into World War III. Sergei Lavrov, in an interview with state-run media, warning the risk for a nuclear war is now very significant. Quote, the danger is serious. It is real. It cannot be underestimated. Adding that he would not like to see the risk be artificially inflated. The chilling warning coming as the U.S. and NATO allies ramp up military aid to Ukraine to fend off the intensifying Russian attacks. We want to see Russia uh, uh, weakened uh, to the degree that it can't uh, do the kinds of things that uh, it has done uh, in, in invading Ukraine. During a previously unannounced visit to the war zone, top American officials telling President Zelensky hundreds of millions of dollars in more aid is on the way. Powerful U.S. provided weapons also arriving on the battlefield. The Kremlin cautioning that NATO weapons deliveries are essentially a proxy war against Russia and that its armed forces will consider the warehouses storing the weapons as legitimate targets for attack. Ukraine's foreign minister on Twitter blasting the threats, writing, quote, Russia loses last hope to scare the world off supporting Ukraine. And this only means Moscow senses defeat in Ukraine. As the Russian attacks escalate in central and western Ukraine, Russian forces also trying to stop the flow of weapons to the front lines. At least five railway stations and fuel sites caught in the crosshairs. Ukrainian officials say Russian shelling killed at least five people in the region. In Kharkiv, volunteers seen trying to help this elderly woman out of a bombed out apartment. And Russia continues suffering massive losses in the face of Ukraine's intense resistance. According to the British Defense Secretary, more than 15,000 Russian troops have died since this invasion. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. In your morning headlines, the Biden administration trying to get the Supreme Court's go ahead to end the Trump era immigration program that forces some people seeking asylum in the U.S. to wait in Mexico for their hearings. The justices are hearing arguments today in the administration's appeal of lower court rulings that require immigration officials to reinstate the remain in Mexico policy. Republican led states that sued to keep the program in place say it has helped reduce the flow of people into the U.S. President Trump launched migrant protection protocols that is formally known in 2019. President Biden suspended it on his first day in office. Law enforcement officials have released video evidence in the ongoing investigation of a deadly shooting of a cinematographer by actor and producer Alec Baldwin on the set of the Western movie Rust. Now, data files released by the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office include lapel camera recordings taken by a commanding officer as he arrives at the film set. Other videos show investigators talking to Baldwin within hours of the fatal shooting and rehearsal clips that show Baldwin in costume as he practices a quick draw maneuver with a gun. Baldwin said in a December interview with ABC News that he was on set pointing the gun at Hutchins at her instruction when it went off without him pulling the trigger. There's a new weapon approved to fight COVID in small children. The FDA has now approved remdesivir to treat COVID in patients as young as 28 days old. The antiviral is given as an injection. The FDA's action makes it the first drug approved to keep COVID in kids younger than 12, uh, to treat rather COVID in kids younger than 12 in order to receive remdesivir. Infected kids must either already be hospitalized or deemed at high risk for developing severe COVID infections. Right now, 439, about 60 degrees. And coming up next, a lot of big Texas picks for the Dallas Cowboys going into the NFL draft this week. We're going to tell you who is most likely to get drafted. And the common theme throughout this first block of our newscast is the rain continues, or at least the chances here or there. Lots of clouds in place, still a bit on the cool side at 60 degrees. It's Tuesday, and you're starting your day with GMSA.
traffic coming up. 442, time for a look at morning sports. Spur San Antonio Spurs all-star DeJounte Murray is missed out on becoming the NBA's most improved player. The title goes to John ja Morant of the Memphis Grizzlies. Murray, who became an all-star for the first time in his career, came in second to Morant, even after totaling 13 triple-doubles this season to improve his career total to 18 overall. But Morant was also a first-time NBA all-star this season with career highs, including in points with 27.4. Morant and Murray were followed by Darius Garland from the Cavs with 178 points. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL holds its annual draft starting at 7 o'clock Thursday night live right here on KSAT 12 and ABC. And the Cowboys first pick will be number 24 overall. And most experts believe the Cowboys will use that pick to select an offensive lineman after losing both Connor Williams and Leo Collins who signed with the Dolphins and the Bengals. In the name being mentioned the most in the mock drafts, Kenyon Green of the Fighting Texas Aggies. What's very interesting is the Cowboys at the 56th pick overall in the second round, and the name being mentioned there is Aggie teammate and former Judson Rocket DeMarvin Leal. He fills another need for the Cowboys in either a defensive end or tackle. Cowboys have nine picks overall, and while it's not normal to use one of those picks for a kicker, Dallas just might have to do that this year. One name that pops up, Longhorns kicker Cameron Dicker in the sixth round. I'm really excited. It means a lot. I've worked really hard for this and finally seeing like a reward for it and it's really exciting. Big surprise, Davenport High School yesterday as Mason McKinley got a send off she was not expecting. She's had a state tennis tournament being held at the Anne Marie Tennis Courts. Uh, McKinley is the first state qualifier from Davenport, which is in its second year as a program. The sophomore will be competing in the Class 4A Girls Singles Competition later this morning at 10.30 a.m. She's one of 23 area tennis players competing across Class 4A, 5A, and 6A competition. Good luck to all our local athletes. Yeah, good luck and congrats at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> time now, 444 and 60 degrees for now. Coming up next, dramatic new video from inside a school bus during a terrifying crash. In this morning's GMA First Look, dramatic new video from inside a school bus during a terrifying crash. 23 students on board the bus in Albuquerque back in February. A Mustang, which police say was racing, hitting the bus's rear tire and causing it to flip over. The children are violently thrown from one side to the other. Seven were sent to the hospital. Those children on that bus could have died because people were literally just having fun in their sports car. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to take a closer look at the question of seat belts on school buses and whether experts believe they could prevent moments like this from happening again. If there could be seat belts on those school buses, then obviously that would improve the protection for those students. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. We are waking up with our eyes on the sky and the roads. That's right. We saw some spots on those from the raindrops on the TransGuy cameras. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, uh, 35 at Loop 410. We are seeing some droplets on this TransGuy camera. And we're, thankfully, we're seeing some pretty calm roads from this shot as well. But getting a closer look, you can see that vehicles are making their way through 35 North at Loop 410 without any trouble. But we know that it was a major trouble spot yesterday along I-10 westbound near Frio, where two 18-wheelers were involved in a pretty serious crash that led to some serious closures and massive delays took them about seven hours to get things cleaned up. So thankfully we're not seeing any of that this morning. Again, quiet roads, but be on the lookout. As I mentioned, the only problem that we've spotted this morning is a stall here off 410 eastbound at Vance Jackson Road. Uh, now taking a look at the drive times in that area. Thankfully, there's not going to be any need to rush through any of these lanes. 410 westbound. If you're trying to get from 35 to I 10, it's just a nine minute drive time in traffic moving at the average speed of six 68 miles per hour and the same goes for those eastbound lanes of 410 getting from I 10 to 35 a nine minute drive time. Now bringing you in a little bit closer to 410 if you're trying to make your way from 35 to 281 right now we are just looking at a five minute drive time and the same goes in those eastbound lanes from 281 to 35. So no worries there. But Justin, we are seeing some droplets that are popping up on some of these trans guide cameras. What can we expect today? Steven, just within the last five to 10 minutes, we've seen some more activity showing up on radar here around San Antonio. So we're going to get you a little closer look here. If you're heading out the door early this morning, yes, there are some decent downpours starting to pop up. Looks like we have some energy coming in from the south and east here. And 
you see that little pop up there. That's likely putting down some pretty good rain right along. Uh, well, just to the east of uh, China Grove, right along Highway 87 there, seeing some very good rain, and that's likely going to cause ponding on the roadways. We're also looking at more activity up here around Randolph, up towards Shirts, an area that got a lot of rain yesterday. So we're going to add to those totals this morning. Another pop-up right over Steele High School there, likely putting down some good rain, and then also just to the uh, east of Windcrest, seeing another pop-up shower. And it's possible that these could put down some, or we could hear some lightning and thunder with this. So just a heads up, looks like in a general sense, we're seeing a little bit of an increase in activity here around San Antonio. So be on the lookout for that this morning. We still have the potential for more downpours as the morning goes on. And as you're heading out the door this morning, observed rainfall, and this is yesterday, so we have the potential to add to this a little bit, but big numbers out west, Places like Lake Amistad, a place that needed the rain, 5.13. That was the biggest total yesterday. Kerrville got some good rain. Lewing, Yoakum, 3.25. A little closer in here. Stone Oak, about uh, four tenths of an inch. Uh, Randolph, 2.3, and you're getting more rain this morning. New Braunfels, 0.65. Seguin, 1.35. Not as big of totals here across the city of San Antonio, but some rain nonetheless. And it was good rain, a good soaking rain in many cases. What can we expect today? We are looking for more showers again over the uh, through the morning hours by lunchtime. I think things are starting to calm down just a little bit and some of the models are indicating some possible clearing a little bit later this evening. So we could see the sun pop out briefly, but in general, it is going to be sort of a cloudy day. Rain chances at 40% this morning. We'll drop those down to a 30 to even 20% chance as we head towards the noon hour and temperatures in the 60s this afternoon, maybe up close to 70 for a high. Right now, 60 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at 9 miles per hour and temperatures fairly chilly. 55 Bernie stage, 56 in Curvo. You'll find some even cooler numbers up in the Texas Panhandle. So this is a fairly cool air, air mass. 43 Wichita Falls, 44 right now in Amarillo. Here's the future cast. When is our next chance of rain? Well, after our rain chances go away today, it gets warmer on Wednesday. Same story on Thursday. Rain chances not in the forecast either one of those days. But as we get into the weekend, and this is Saturday evening, another weak frontal boundary tries to work into the area, and that could give us a small chance for some storms. Here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. Cloudy chance of showers, especially this morning. 80 tomorrow, 85 Thursday, close to 90. Friday and over the weekend, but we have added in that chance for some storms coming up on Saturday. We'll watch out for that. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. 452, about 60 degrees. And coming up next, a new series debuts on HBO Max. Plus, we get our first look at the actress portraying Whitney Houston in a new biopic. A first look at Whitney Houston's biopic, plus We Own This City debuts on HBO Max. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It feels like a sequel to The Wire. The series We Own This City is from The Wire creator David Simon, and it looks at the true story of the Baltimore Police Department's elite gun trace task force, which turned out to be full of dirty cops. King Richard's Ronaldo Marcus Green directed the show, telling me he was inspired by The Wire and True Detective and Training Day. But this story is its own thing. We haven't seen, you know, this many officers doing this level of corruption. Like, it's never happened. It's unprecedented. We Own the City premiered last night on HBO and HBO Max. New episodes every Monday. Listen to bands, Tyler, the creator, back on top of the Billboard 200. His album, Call Me If You Get Lost, returns to number one after debuting in first last July. The reason it resurfaced? It was just released on vinyl, and Billboard says it had the best sales week for a hip-hop album on vinyl in the modern era. Meanwhile, as it was, is added again. The Harry Styles song tops the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart for a second week in a row. His first solo multi-week chart leader. And it's our official first look at Naomi Aki as Whitney Houston. The poster just debuted for the upcoming biopic, I Want to Dance with Somebody. It's due out in theaters in December. And happy birthday to Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad star Giancarlo Esposito. He's 64 today, while legendary comedian Carol Burnett turns 89. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
Happy birthday from your hometown, Ms. Burnett. Yeah, happy birthday. Time now, 457, 60 degrees for now. Still had big changes could soon be coming to Twitter now that Elon Musk has reached a deal to buy it for roughly Six degrees for now. Still had big changes could soon be coming to Twitter now that Elon Musk has reached a deal to buy it for roughly $44 billion. Plus, General Motors gets ready to release an electrified version of the Chevy Corvette. Details ahead in Tech Bites. And checking the roads with TransGuide. We'll be right back. The radar is getting a little more busy this morning. We're tracking the latest for you when it comes to rain. Coming up. And we are keeping our eye on the roadways, seeing a few droplets on the TransGuide camera, what you can expect in the next few minutes. Plus, why many are praising Elon Musk's agreement to buy Twitter and why some are concerned. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, April 26th. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, you know, at least my drive into work wasn't too bad. I was a little worried after yesterday. Yeah, we had some downpours in different spots this morning right here on the cube. We're showing you some of those showers and storms that are still kind of drifting and moving in different directions. Justin Horn is standing by with the very latest. Hey there, guys. Yeah, it was rather busy yesterday for a time. We saw some good downpours in spots. Now, not everybody's getting a ton of rain out of this, but it is nice to see the radar staying fairly active even into this morning. Let's get right to it. Show you where the rain is at this hour. Starting to fill in a little bit more here around the city of San Antonio. And so that means we're going to see more wet roads. Stephen's going to have more on that in just a second. But you see where the rain is popping up. We're getting some good downpours now just to the uh, east of China Grove right there along 87 on the city's east side or the county's uh, east side there and then along I-10 as you head east out of San Antonio and then some more rain around Shirts and Selma, an area that got quite a bit of rain yesterday. Uh, and the nature of this activity is for it to pop up and then kind of move along. We're not looking for a ton of flooding and we haven't seen a lot of that, but there could be some minor street flooding in spots. And then uh, even around downtown San Antonio, starting to see some pop ups there and then down along 1604 near Somerset, seeing a little bit of rain. So the general idea here is expect some showers this morning. Grab the umbrella as you head out the door and send it with the kids as they head to the bus stop. 60 degrees at the airport. 56 Kerrville, 57 in Fredericksburg. It's a little chilly too. I mean, temperatures are not going to warm all the, um, up all that much today because of the cloud cover. We're expecting to stay in the 60s, maybe up to around 70. 60 right now, Canyon Lake, 60 in New Braunfels. Pollen count, we do got to fit this in. This was yesterday's numbers, but I'm guessing and I'm hoping the oak numbers come down after yesterday's rainfall. They were at 740 yesterday. Not sure about molds, though. With rain around, those mold numbers may jump up, but we'll have the latest once that comes out here in a couple of hours. 58, 7 o'clock, 40% chance of rain. We're going to keep rain chances in through at least the noon hour. I think as we get into the afternoon, it's going to become more sparse. Just some cloudy skies and maybe even a few breaks in those clouds as we get into the evening. Temperatures, as I mentioned, up around 70 for a high with some northeasterly winds. And the extended forecast does include some more rain chances down the line. We'll get to that coming up a little bit later. Let's go over to Stephen now and uh, talk roadways. How are they looking? Well, thankfully, we're not seeing any trouble just yet, Justin, but we know that yesterday that rain that we saw led to some traffic trouble along I-10 at Frio. But right now, we are just seeing some quiet roadways and a few droplets are being picked up on some of these TransGuide cameras. Now, we're going to talk to our friends over there at TransGuide, try to get different views, but you can see US-90 at Nogalitos. There is almost like a sheen on the roadway, so just remember to drive safe this morning and give yourself plenty of time. There's no need to rush out the door, but we want to make sure you get to where you you need to be on time, but more importantly, safely. Let's go ahead and show you the map because thankfully we are seeing more green than anything else on the screen. Uh, noticing there off Bandera, a slight slowdown. We'll find out what's happening there in just a few moments, but let's go ahead and show you those inbound times because if you plan on traveling into San Antonio, no need to rush. As I mentioned, if you're making the journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound, 25 minutes at this hour in those southbound lanes, if you were with us a little bit earlier, we told you about a slight slowdown on 281 southbound coming in from Mulverde, 26 on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So uh, again, we're starting the morning off better than what we saw the day and yesterday. Again, that crash off uh, you, uh, pardon me, I-10 led, uh, led to some, some massive delays and took several hours to clear. Right now we are in the clear, but we'll see how long that lasts. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Steve. And a long time south side daycare that was destroyed by a fire a week and a half ago. Now the owner is asking the community for help to keep the center open. Sarah Costa is live in the studio with what the owner of Guardian Angel Child Development Center says they need most. 
Good morning. Good morning, guys. And I remember watching this live and that fire was just so massive. It was a story we first brought you on GMSA on April 15th. That was on a Friday. Our Katrina Weber was live at the location all morning. Just take a look at the video from that morning. So you can see how horrific the flames were when that fire broke out at the daycare center. Firefighters having to fight it defensively from above and that fire burning the Guardian Angel Child Development Center down to its studs. You can see right there the daycare center on Pleasanton Road has been open since the 1980s. The owner Eli Guetta vows to keep it open and serve the community in honor of his late wife who died four years ago. He says in order to do so, he needs help from San Antonio residents. So just take a look at your screen. He has already found a temporary location at 102 West White Avenue, but the center really needs child care items and supplies to keep it going. Of course, all of their items were destroyed in that fire, so you can see all of them listed on your screen right now. They are asking for any kind of toys, storage bins, shelves, kids' tables and chairs, swings and bouncers, play mats and baby toys. These items they're asking to be dropped off at that new temporary location at W White Avenue. If you head to KSAT.com, we'll have a number listed that you can call if you have any questions about what else they need. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. An execution delayed for a South Texas woman. Melissa Lucio will have a chance to show court new evidence in her case. Her son spoke after an appeals court granted the stay. We are, we're just one big old team, you know, putting up the fight for my mother, Melissa Elizabeth Lucio. Today, we got the great news. She got a state of, execu state of execution, and uh, she won't be heading to Hudsonville Wednesday. Lucio's execution was scheduled for tomorrow, and that's after a jury convicted her in the death of her two-year-old daughter in Harlingen. But there are growing doubts in the verdict, even among some of the jurors who sentenced her to death. Support from celebrities and lawmakers have led to national coverage of the case, and now a lower court will review claims of new evidence in the case that could exonerate her. Just about 5.07, now to Elon Musk buying Twitter. Reaction has been pouring in overnight. Critics worry Musk will have too much power. At the same time, others are praising the deal, saying it will protect free speech online. ABC's Faith Abube has more. This morning, the debate is raging over how Elon Musk taking over Twitter could change social media. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO promising to redefine free speech online, open up the flow of information and be more inclusive after criticizing how Twitter currently moderates messages it views as hateful or disinformation. Musk tweeting, quote, I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that's what free speech means. Among his supporters, Twitter shareholders who receive $54.20 for every share they own. That's nearly 40% more than what the stock was worth earlier this month. For a lot of shareholders, this is kind of a, a, a quick win. Musk hasn't said whether he'll allow banned users like former President Trump back on the site. But Trump says even if he's reinstated, he'll be staying off Twitter in favor of his own platform, Truth Social. One of Twitter's founders and its former CEO, Jack Dorsey, writing, quote, it has been owned by Wall Street and the ad model. Taking it back from Wall Street is the correct first step. But many others are highly critical of the deal. Human rights groups worrying the hate speech could find a new home on the platform. Others worry the deal will hand the world's richest person too much power. Senator Elizabeth Warren tweeting, quote, billionaires like Elon Musk play by a different set of rules than everyone else, accumulating power for their own gain. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 508, about 60 degrees. And coming up next, how a local collectible shop is recovering following a break in this past weekend. That's coming up south side with live cam this morning. See how things are looking out there as we're waking up on a Tuesday. Lots of clouds, a sprinkle or two, but the roads are generally dry here in town. That could change later on. How much longer could the chance of showers and storms last? We're checking back in with meteorologist Justin Horn. 512, welcome back. A San Antonio business owner is trying to reopen his shop just days after a break-in. Inside Boomtown Sports Cards and Collectibles was a mess this past weekend. The owner of the shop on Bandera Road says the vandals used a brick inside a pillowcase to get in. They stole about twenty to $25,000 worth of memorabilia. 
I feel like they knew what they were what they knew what they were going to take already because they took certain things. So they might have been here before and kind of scouted the place out because, like I said, they took certain things that are worth that is worth the most money. You know, the most expensive boxes. San Antonio police are investigating. However, they have not released information on the suspects yet. The plan is to reopen Boomtown Thursday afternoon. 512 now 59 degrees and still ahead. Sony says a PlayStation 5 update is going out this week. We're going to tell you how it will improve your experience. And next an update on when Chevrolet is set to release its all new electric Corvette. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide. There's a look there at I-35 and Evans. Things are moving in that shot. And also at I-37 and Jones. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Medusa lived with a hideous curse. I mean, the whole turning people to stone thing was a bit of a buzzkill, right? So she ordered sunglasses with Prime, one day delivery. Clever girl. People realize she's actually hilarious once you get to know her. Ugh, as if. When he was asking for it, Prime changes everything. Ugh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all, take Zizol at night. For people who are a little intense about hydration, Neutrogena Hydro Boost. Lightweight, fragrance-free, 48-hour hydration for that healthy skin glow. Neutrogena, for people with skin. Welcome back and good morning, 516 Meta, formerly known as Facebook, opening its first retail store. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook parent company Meta will soon open its first physical retail store. Customers will get to try out products like Meta's latest VR headsets, smart classes, and video chat devices. The store will be located on the company's Burlingame, California campus. It opens May 9th. Next, don't be surprised if games on your PlayStation 5 soon look a lot smoother. Sony is sending out an update this week to support what's called variable refresh rate. The company says the update allows the best TVs to be in sync with the PS5's output, creating crisper gameplay. And one of the big three automakers' iconic vehicles is going electric. The head of GM says an electrified version of the Corvette will come out next year, followed soon by a fully electric model. Just remember, when you walk into a showroom to buy an electric car, don't forget to ask how much they charge. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That was cute. He went there. He <laughs> went there. Okay, it's only Tuesday, so yeah. we'll, we'll let him off the hook. I, I think it was okay. All right, charging forward now on our own now with Stephen Cavazos getting an update on how things are looking out there on the road. Yeah, we don't want to see any vehicles moving like that electric Corvette in that uh, preview, mm -hmm. but uh, thankfully we are seeing some pretty smooth commutes here on this shot at Transguide. US 98 couples, 281 at San Pedro. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of droplets as well as we get more folks waking up with us and getting their day started out on the road. Just Remember to take it slow this morning. Give yourself plenty of time when you head out there. The roads are still damp and we still may have some puddles out there, but now that we're seeing some of those droplets, that could change the commute. So just remember to take it easy. Uh, as we see on our map, no slowdowns just yet. The morning is still young, but let's go ahead and bring you into the east side here off of uh, I-10 because it looks like a stall popped up here on those westbound lanes of I-10 right there at Dietrich Road. Not causing problems, but this is the second stall we've seen this early in the morning. So just remember to move over slowly down when you see those flashing lights. But let's uh, give you a quick reminder what's happening on the west side of San Antonio. Some painting operations will continue overnight this week. We're going to see that actually wrap up on May 9th. Now this is for those overnight or early bird commuters, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. What you can expect there is an alternating main lane closure in both directions. That's from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. And as a reminder, grab your phones, open that camera app because we have our QR code right there on your screen. Scan that QR code that will take you directly to the case that traffic page for the latest on anything that could be impacting your commute. And we obviously know that there was a lot of issues out on the roads yesterday, so we were tweeting about it. Look for those alternative routes on that page as well. And if there's anything that pops up this morning, of course, we'll be sure to let you know. But let's check in with Justin. He'll let us know about the forecast.
Stephen, thank you, sir. Uh, your trans guide cameras are very telling. So some of those roads are dry, some are wet. And that's really the nature of this activity. It's going to pop up and move along. There's going to be some spots where there's heavy rain and there may be some areas where you don't have any rain at all. It, it's very hit or miss and we can see that here on the radar. We're starting to see more of these showers though pop up and really I call them downpours because there's some areas where we're seeing some pretty heavy rain here just to the east of China Grove. We pointed that out earlier. Really good downpour along Highway 87. So that's going to be a wet drive if you're coming in from the east side near Calaveras Lake. Seeing a good downpour there and then uh, just to the south of downtown uh, seeing another downpour here just along uh, 281 there as it goes south near 1604 between 410 and uh, the, uh, 1604 there on the city's south side. So be aware of that. Th there's not much lightning or thunder with this activity. It's just really some good heavy rain, which we'll take, by the way, uh, some good numbers yesterday with some of that rainfall. And then another area down here along 1604 near Highway 16, uh, we're noticing some pretty good rain there. So a lot of uh, activity really in southern Bear County right now. As you go north for the city's north side, there are some pop-up showers here starting to develop along 281 near Hollywood Park, just crossing over 281 there south of 1604. And then up around the rim, some showers, Leon Springs. And then uh, Bernie, you're dry right now, but there could be a few more showers working in your direction here over the next couple of hours. So all this to say, if you're heading out the door right now, grab the umbrella. You may want the jacket too, because it's gonna be chilly most of today. Now this model doesn't show a whole lot through the morning hours, but I think there will be more pop up showers and downpours as we get towards the afternoon. Some of the models are hinting at some clearing. I think the rain sort of tapers off. The sun may pop out briefly, but in general, it's going to be a cloudy day and that'll really keep temperatures in check. 30% chance of rain at 8 o'clock, 60 degrees. We're only up to 64 noontime. We're going to bring rain chances down to 20% chance. And then as we get into the afternoon, maybe some peaks of sun. Your temperature will make it up to about 70 degrees, and we'll get northeasterly winds breezy from time to time. Yesterday at the airport, we picked up about 7 tenths of an inch. That pushed our rainfall total for the month up close to an inch. We're still about an inch below average. So yes, the rain was good, but it certainly wasn't a drop buster by any stretch of the imagination. We will continue to need more. It went a long way, though, and it, it was great to see that it was also very widespread around the area. Right now, 60 degrees with some rain coming down at the airport. Northerly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. We're sitting at 61 in Hondo, 57 Kerrville. 56 Boulevard, 65 down there at Stinson. And as we look at the big picture here, this is the future cast going forward. It does get warmer as we get into tomorrow. Warmer and also more humid. Not much rain next couple after today, next couple days. But as we get into the weekend, weak frontal boundary tries to sink south, and this may be enough to give us a few storms Saturday afternoon. Nothing that's going to be as widespread as what we are looking at today but a chance nonetheless. So we're going to put in a 40% chance of showers generally this morning and then getting quieter this afternoon. Okay. 70 year high temperature, 80 on Wednesday, 85 Thursday, close to 90 by Friday and into the weekend. And right now we've put in a 20% chance of rain on Saturday. All right, but a good looking week. Good looking week, more spring like. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Right now, 523, about 59 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Johnny Depp concludes his testimony and a first look at a special auction of Matrix items. Just about 526, Johnny Depp concludes his testimony and Lizzo announces a new tour. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. The only person that I have ever abused in my life is myself. Johnny Depp concluded his testimony in his $50 million defamation lawsuit against ex-wife Amber Heard. She described herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse in a 2018 op-ed. And though Depp wasn't mentioned by name in the article, he claims it cost him lucrative acting work. Heard has yet to testify in the trial, which is expected to wrap up next month. Lizzo just announced her first tour in three years. She'll be hitting the concert trail in September for a 25-show North America tour to promote her new album, Special, which drops July 15th. Welcome to the real world. Ever wanted to own a piece of the Matrix? Well, now's your chance. 
Matrix filmmakers Lily and Lana Wachowski are auctioning off memorabilia from their personal archive to raise money for transgender youth protection and advocacy organizations. The auction's set for May 12th, but you can get your bids in before then on potterauctions.com. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Some pricey items. I imagine so. 527, just under 60 degrees now. And still ahead on GMSA, a federal judge blocks the White House from ending Title 42. We're going to tell you what's next for the situation at the border. Plus, some streaming services losing thousands of viewers, what some are doing to keep their customers. Plus, a spicy favorite back on the menu at Chick-fil-A. Making headlines this morning, the Biden White House temporarily blocked from ending Title 42 by a federal judge in Louisiana. What that means for the situation at an already stressed border. And taking a look outside with live cam. You can see those spots there on our TransGuy camera. Actually, it's a live cam camera, but uh, either way, it's some rain here or there out there. We'll be checking in with Justin very soon. Very hit or miss. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 26th. And a lot of people got what they were hoping for, and that was a lot of rain, but it was here or there yesterday as well. And continues this morning, as you can see from the radar behind us. Justin joined us now with more. Honestly, it's exciting that we're getting to use the radar two days in a row. It's been a while since we've been able to do that. More showers and pop-up downpours on the radar this morning. Uh, so if you're uh, headed out the door right now, you may run into some rain. But the nature of this activity is that it pops up, puts down some pretty good rain, and then uh, moves along or dies down. So let's look a little closer here at Bear County and where we're seeing some of those heavier downpours remains to be uh, remains on the east side here around China Grove, seeing some good rain there uh, as you head out towards Lavernia. And then we're seeing another pop up shower now around these shirts area. And of course, that was a spot yesterday that got some pretty good rain. We're going to add to that this morning. We'll zoom in a little bit closer and you can see right around Randolph. That's where uh, the rain is coming down pretty heavily right now, not detecting lightning strikes or anything like this. So this is mostly just uh, good rain, but it, uh, it may add up pretty quickly. You could see some minor street flooding. And then as we go north, just north of Garden Ridge, seeing a nice cell here, and this is going to work its way towards New Braunfels here over the next hour or so. So if you're watching for maybe the west side of New Braunfels, prepare for some rain there as well. We'll zoom out one more time and kind of show you the big picture here. And we're seeing more scattered showers around the city of San Antonio. It's not just those spots I showed you, but those are where we're seeing some of the heavier downpours. Some light rain over downtown, also on the city's north side. Seeing some showers there, even as you go out towards Castroville and Hondo. Temperatures are cool, 60 degrees right now at the airport, 57 Kerrville, 60 Canyon Lake, 61 out there in Hondo. And the forecast for today, it's going to keep things uh, on the cool side. 58 degrees, 7 o'clock. We'll only be up around 64 or so by noontime. Notice rain chances, though, start to come down some. And by the afternoon, I think rain really does begin to wind down. We'll still see a lot of clouds, though, and that will only allow temperatures to get up to around 70 degrees or so later this afternoon. All right, Stephen, it was busy yesterday. How are things looking this morning? A lot more calm, Justin, and that's the way we hope things stay. But obviously, we know when more people get out there, things can also change. Let's get a look at 35 North at Loop 410. You see a few more droplets on that transguide camera. And as morning has gone on, that is what we've been seeing. Aside from traffic picking up, just more of those droplets. And it uh, looks like some of the roads are a little damp. So just remember to take it slow. Uh, that's always the best way to go. But make sure you give yourself that time this morning. Thankfully, there's no issues that would cause any delays for this early morning drive. Let's get that wide look at the map. Now, for our friends over near the northeast side of 1604, you see a little bit of orange that's building up there. That's some stop and go traffic. We'll find out what's happening. But thankfully, no other slowdowns to report just yet. Let's go ahead and bring it in because we still have this stall off of I-10 westbound right there at Dietrich Road. This hasn't been causing any trouble for drivers that are traveling into San Antonio, perhaps from Seguin, but we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown in those westbound lanes of I-10, but they're still pretty green. 29 minutes at this hour if your travels are taking you right here to the Alamo City. 80, 23 minutes if you're traveling up 87 northbound from Lavernia, and we're looking at a 29-minute drive time for our friends down in Floridasville. So no delays that we've spotted just yet, but we know the morning is young and we are seeing some damp roads out there and a few more droplets on that transguide camera. We'll continue to watch these roads closely, but as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen.
New this morning, it's not exactly on any bus route, but two workers from a local Greyhound station have made a trip to a hospital. San Antonio police say an upset passenger lashed out against both of them with a knife. The attacks happened at the downtown bus station on North St. Mary's near East Martin. Katrina Weber is there and has a live report. And Katrina, do police have any idea what set off that passenger? Well, they told us that this passenger was upset about his luggage being lost and then he lost it and lashed out, stabbing a bus driver and a security guard. Now, those attacks, which happened before 3 o'clock this morning, had this area swarming with police. They say the bus driver was attacked after he came out of a restroom. That man who's in his 60s was stabbed in his back. Police say when the security guard here tried to intervene, he also was stabbed, but in his chest. He's in his 50s. Police say both of them were stable as they left for a hospital and ambulances. The suspect, who is in his 30s, did not get a chance to leave. Police took him into custody right away, and they say that he will face criminal charges. Now, we don't know whether any of that affected the bus service here at this uh, Greyhound terminal, but it does appear now that things are back to business as usual. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 535, early voting is underway for the May 7th elections. If you plan to vote by mail, there are several things you do need to know. Sarah Costa joins us now in the studio with all the details. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. So get this, in last election, nearly 4,000 Bear County voters had their mail-in ballots rejected. That means their votes did not count. Now election officials are trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. The biggest issue was over a new requirement from the controversial state voting law. So when voters sent their mail ballots back. They now have to put their ID number associated with the registration in this area under the flap of the carrier envelope. But many people missed it entirely or wrote the wrong one in. So nearly 22% of mail ballots were rejected. Bear County elections officials say in previous elections that would normally be just two to three percent. So Bear County elections officials are trying to be proactive this time. We're told things are already looking better this time around. So now get your phone out. This is a great way to get more information. You can just take out your phone, open up the camera app and scan this QR code that's on your screen right now. And keep in mind, if you would still like to request a mail-in ballot, today is your last day. So early voting for this election runs until May 3rd. Polls will be open from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening. We have all that information on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for this story on the homepage. Mark and Steph. Sarah, thank you very much. Well, as the policy known as Title 42 revolves around two major issues for the Biden administration, border security and the COVID-19 pandemic. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, Texas has filed a separate case calling for Title 42 to be blocked. However, a federal judge has yet to rule in that case. The Biden White House is temporarily blocked from ending Title 42 by a federal judge in Louisiana. If President Biden lifts Title 42, what we see today will be much worse. A country without a secure border is not a country. Title 42 allows U.S. border officials to turn migrants away due to public health concerns, namely the COVID-19 pandemic. This is not an immigration policy. This uh, Title 42 is a health authority that's determined by the CDC. Uh, and we, uh, we need to have a conversation about immigration reform. That's vital. Maybe this is a reminder of that. Critics of removing the order say it is likely to cause a greater surge of migrants at an already stressed border. Title 42 is a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. It's not actual border security. It's important, but it represents the ability to turn people away and actually secure the border. President Joe Biden wants to end the policy, which was invoked during the Trump administration on May 23rd, and a White House source says the federal judge's block may not disrupt those plans. I would note that there are a range of views on Title 42. There are some, you noted, who are very vocal about how they would like to see it extended. There are some who are very vocal about how they would not like to see that happen. So that's an important discussion that will be happening over the coming days and weeks. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 539, about 59 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, streaming services are seeing a decline in viewers. We're going to tell you which one consumers are most likely to keep. Next, a closer look at what's being done to get health care to those who need it the most. 
and taking a look outside with a live cam. There's a the story there, spotty showers here and there throughout our area. We'll be checking in with Justin very soon. Welcome back, 542 Nationwide. Communities are shining the spotlight on disparities in health care for minority populations. Metro Health is doing the same here in San Antonio. As Courtney Friedman reports, the focus right now is on immunizations and the gaps in access. This map shows the percentages of people vaccinated for COVID-19 in each area of San Antonio. The lighter colors showing fewer vaccinated people are in many of the same zip codes where Metro Health has already identified disparities in health care for minorities. We have a lot of programs within uh, federal immunizations that offer vaccines at low cost or no cost. Metro Health Immunizations Program Manager Michelle Gilstrap says the financial aspect covered during the height of COVID it will remain, but access is still an issue. So they're also continuing and even expanding the mobile pop-up clinic model that helped immensely when COVID-19 vaccines were released. Since the onset of COVID, is we recognize the need to have additional staff available in their own right to go out and do these vaccine clinics. Federal dollars helped Metro Health hire 30 to 40 contract workers and fill full-time positions by moving employees from other departments. Those jobs, permanent now that they're scaling their mobile clinic model to fill continuing gaps in care. We're utilizing our pop-up structure uh, for getting not only COVID vaccine out, but also intending to roll out other vaccines. You can also make your own request to have one of these mobile health clinics come to your school, your church, or your event. All you have to do is call Metro Health or send them an email. We'll have a link at ksat.com. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 5.43 and 59 degrees right now. Uh, hi folks, a fan favorite breakfast item is back on the menu at Chick-fil-A. Looks good. And taking a look outside with TransGuide, looking there at I-35 at Evans. Things are moving there and things appear to be moving there at I-37 and Jones. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cabasos after the break. And welcome back. It's 546 in your morning consumer headlines. American households are tightening their budgets and streaming services are taking a hit. So last week, Netflix announced it lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter and says it expects to lose a huge 2 million subscribers before July. A new survey conducted by research firm Momentum and CNBC found that 35% of Americans cut a monthly subscription to rein in their spending, while another 36% are considering it. Disney Plus is struggling to keep up with Netflix, which was still first choice for consumers to keep. Experts say it's evidence that Disney Plus is still trying to figure out what people want to watch. The popular ABC show Dancing with the Stars will air exclusively on Disney Plus starting in the fall. Interesting. Okay, a fan favorite back on the menu at Chick-fil-A after a, really a six-year hiatus. The chicken chain bringing back the spicy chicken biscuit. Be available at select 1,300 restaurants nationwide, but it doesn't stop there. A new seasonal item making its debut. It's called the Cloudberry Sunjoy Beverage. It's a blend of the classic lemonade, sweet tea, mixed with flavors of cloudberry and cherry blossom. If you've never heard of a cloudberry, it may be because it's native to the Arctic. Mm. It's a cross between a raspberry and a red currant. I swear the spicy chicken biscuit was on the menu like a year ago. But I, I thought it was still on the menu. Did, I just didn't select did it. Did we <laughs> just lose track of six years somewhere? I think so. Well, and also because they still have the spicy chicken sandwich, yeah. and so we yeah. probably just got mixed up with all that. Hmm. This has planted a seed for later this morning. Okay. I think I know what I want for breakfast. 548, Stephen, what's on your menu this morning, sir? Well, hopefully you bring you some for the rest of us. Oh, that uh, would now be... Now that you put it out there. Very nice uh, That thought. would be very yes, nice. Yes, I... <laughs> I'll see, I'll see what I can do. Uh, we'll, 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 that we'll manifest it here. You know, we never know. Mark bring, will bring us food. All right. But thankfully, uh, we've been manifesting some decent traffic from these shots of TransGuide. You are seeing that 281 at San Pedro. We've been kind of keeping it on the rotator so we can show you the conditions. A few more droplets out there and a few more folks getting their morning started. But thankfully, no major issues have been reported just yet. But I do want to start with that wide look at the map right here. And you can see uh, over here off of I-10, a crash is 
has been picked up. Now we're going to get to that in just a moment, but stalls seem to be the trending issue. Let's go ahead and start over here right there at 410 eastbound at Babcock Road. There's actually been some road debris that was picked up a little bit earlier. It hasn't been causing issues for drivers, but something to be aware of. Make sure that you stay focused on the road and avoid any distractions. Taking a drive over here, 37 southbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard, a second stall that we are adding to our list. However, what the first stall that we told you about was right over here off of I-10 westbound at Dietrich Road. Now that is where our map is picking up a crash. I haven't talked to our friends at Transguide about this incident, but we're going to keep it as a stall until we learn more information. But thankfully, we have not picked up any flashing lights out here, just some smooth traffic and a few droplets. But let's check in with Justin Horn. Thanks, sir. I didn't get much rain where I was yesterday, less than a tenth of an inch, but some places saw over two inches, and that has been the nature of this activity. Some pop up downpours if you're underneath one of those you're going to get a, a, some pretty good rainfall totals and we're seeing some of those downpours this morning, especially on the south and the east side of Bear County. So uh, you see the activity is not moving really fast and that's why I think there could be some decent numbers even this morning. Let's zoom in on this uh, heavier cell down here along 281 and 1604. Uh, this is slowly drifting to the south and east, but not before dropping quite a bit of rain there right at the intersection of 281 and 1604. Uh, there on the south side of the county, and that'll continue to work its way uh, towards I-37 there here over the next uh, five to ten minutes. We've also seen some pretty heavy rain right around China Grove. That is sticking around. If you're watching us from Atkins this morning, you're getting some good rain at this hour. Not a lot of lightning strikes or thunder with this. This is just that uh, good downpour activity. So 1604 there along uh, Highway 87, getting some good rain. And then back up towards uh, Randolph. It's been uh, kind of off and on all morning. This is an area that really did well yesterday with the rainfall and is doing well again this morning. Uh, rest of San Antonio, a little more spotty. We are seeing some showers here on the northwest side around Holotus and then up towards Leon Springs, around Bandera, and then maybe around Stone Oak, a few light showers this morning. If, uh, if you're heading to the bus stop or you're heading out the door for work, grab the umbrella, grab a, a light jacket too. It's, it's a little cool out there and it will stay that way through much of today. Well, let's look at some of the rainfall totals yesterday. Now this is not including this morning's rain, but we had some big numbers out west places like Lake Amistad over five inches place that needed the rain desperately. So good to see you go past 1.81 Kerrville nearly an inch Luling 1.2 Yoakum 3.25 a little closer in Stone Oak almost half an inch New Braunfels close to seven tenths of an inch. Now you go west to New Braunfels. The totals were much higher. Uh, JBSA Randolph 2.3. We're adding to that this morning. It's a game 1.3 and officially at the airport 0.7. Here's a look at the forecast for the rest of today, and it does include more light showers. I'd say through the first half of the day, and then as we get into the afternoon, you'll see the showers and downpours become more wide or less widespread, I should say. And we may start to see some clearing as we get later into the evening hours. So rain chances look like this 40% 7 o'clock, 30% by 8 a.m. Temperatures not budging much in the 60s for the most part. 64 noontime, 20% chance of rain. And by the afternoon, just a 20% chance. And really, I think that does taper off to about a 10% chance by 5 p.m. 70, your high temperature. That's it. So, yes, it'll be below average today. Take a look at the time lapse. We've had some off and on showers overnight and into this morning and still reporting some rain at the airport right now. Northerly winds at 12 miles per hour. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And then as we zoom out, you'll see that there are 40s on the map this morning. Some frost advisories for parts of the Texas Panhandle. It's 44 up in Amarillo. So this front did bring in some cooler air, but it's uh, it's going to change. We'll see warmer numbers next couple days. And when we're talking rainfall, well, we have that 40% chance this morning. Beyond that, our rain chances don't kick in again, really, until we get into the weekend. 20% chance on Saturday. So we'll go 80 tomorrow. There's your warm up. 85 Thursday it gets more humid, hot during the afternoons. Thursday, Friday, we'll see some morning clouds, but afternoon sun. Saturday, 20% chance of storms. Right now, it looks like the best chance will be north of San Antonio, but we'll have to watch out for a couple strong ones potentially over the weekend. But the rain chances are low, guys. All right. Well, at least we got a little bit of rain this time around. It's nice to see two days here where we've been using the radar. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. 553, about 58 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, 097, fireball three, daily four, 0943, fireball two.
Your cash five numbers 10, 20, 23, 24, 32. Texas two step. You're looking at 9, 14, 22, 34, and a bonus ball of 33. Powerball, here are the numbers, and apparently nobody won. The jackpot now up to $454 million. 12, 18, 20, 39, 61. Powerball 10, Power Play 2. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the war in Ukraine and the dire new warning about nuclear conflict from a top Russian official. And an exclusive interview with the mother whose 14-year-old son died on an amusement park ride over spring break. She's filing a wrongful death suit. And the mission to save the rhinos. We are live in South Africa with the miracle baby rhino providing new hope. Matt Gutman is there and we'll have so much more coming up right here on GMA. Right now, KSAT.com, voters casting a ballot early for the May 7th election that includes some bonds, some constitutional amendments, special proposals, and property taxes. We lay it all out for you on KSAT.com. Head in the next hour of GMSA, we'll introduce you to a pediatric pancreatitis survivor who continues to fight for her life and the lives of others with her condition. And you won't want to miss this story. The moment a car slams into a bus full of middle school students. Shocking video, more of that to come. Checking Transcad right now. The roads are wet in some spots, uh, drier in others. We've had more showers overnight. They continue at this hour. We're checking in with Stephen and Justin coming up. This morning, two people in the hospital with stab wounds following an argument over lost luggage. We're going to have the details. And how would you like to own a piece of cinema history? We'll tell you how much one of Dorothy's dresses from The Wizard of Oz will run you. And taking a look outside with a live cam spot. Showers expected today after uh, here and there rain yesterday, but some of us got a lot of rain. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is April 26th. And one of the things you'll notice when you walk out the door this morning is it's fairly cool this morning, yeah, Steph. Yeah, it was actually kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, jacket, no jacket. It's, it's kind of nice. I'm going to enjoy it for now. Now, the stray showers and storms have continued into the overnight hours and as well in this morning. Justin, in for Mike. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's still cloudy and cool out there. I don't think anyone was complaining yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was welcome to see the rain. It was great to see it. And we were seeing a little bit more coming up uh, this morning. Some showers still showing up on radar. Let's get right to it. We'll show you where uh, some of the heavier rain is. Uh, South Bear County there, just southwest of Elmendorf along I-37, seeing a nice downpour there. Some downpours generally on the east side of the county, but we are seeing some light showers within the city of San Antonio. We'll zoom in a little bit closer here. Light rain uh, up around 281, 1604. It's spotty. A lot like yesterday, you're going to run into some quick downpours and then uh, there could be some dry spots as well, just depending on what your commute looks like this morning. Uh, temperatures are on the chilly side, 58 degrees now in San Antonio. We've got a northeasterly wind and cloudy skies. And that's going to keep temperatures down most of today. We're not going to warm up all that much. 56 Kerrville, 59 Uvalde, 60 in New Braunfels, uh, 58 over there at Randolph, 62 right now. Pleasanton with cloudy skies for you. Pollen count yesterday had high mold and high oak. My hope is that the rain washed some of that oak out. We'll see where we land today. Molds may still be elevated because obviously it's been sort of damp the last couple days. Uh, here's what our forecast looks like. 30 to 40% chance of rain this morning. And the rain chances taper off as we head towards the lunch hour. 64 degrees noon time, 66 by 1 p.m. And still some small chances of rain even into the afternoon. But I think by the evening, we could start to see some clearing and those rain chances go away. It'll be warmer coming up tomorrow probably back into the 80s. We'll have a look at that extended forecast coming up, but we got to go over to Steven now and looks like we may have some issues starting to pump up. You know, right at the 6 a.m. hour, Justin, the, I was just talking to our friends at Transguide. We are hearing about reports of a possible rollover here off 35 at Burbank is a view that they've shown us. Uh, we can't really make out the actual scene or find out how many vehicles are possibly involved or if the drivers were hurt, but you can see that we do have first responders out there working to get this scene cleared up before it gets pretty busy out there this morning. Let's go ahead and show you where we have that pinpointed on our map. Now, this is always subject to change as sometimes textile 
rod and our map will pinpoint it at different locations. But well, we'll right now put it right there at I 10 westbound near US 90 westbound. So you can see uh, not really seen so much of a buildup in either direction, but it's an area that we will continue to watch closely throughout the morning. It is just one of the issues that we are tracking. Thankfully, the other problems aren't really big, but you can see here we stalls have been popping up 37 southbound right there at Caesar Chavez Boulevard. A stall was the latest one that we've added to our list, but it wasn't really causing any issues. Uh, thankfully, we're not seeing delays this hour. 29 minutes still pretty pleasant. If you're traveling up 37 northbound from Pleasanton, 19 minutes on Highway 90 traveling in from Castroville in those eastbound lanes, 17 minutes, 35 northbound for our friends down in Lytle. So no need to rush out the door. We're going to find out more details on the situation happening here at 35 and we'll give you more updates right here on GMSA. Mark. Stephen, thank you. News stories from this morning. Overnight, a man shot in the stomach on far southwest Bear County and San Antonio police are asking the community for help in finding a woman disappeared five years ago today. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with these stories. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. First, we are going to start off with a shooting that, with the help of the victim, deputies were able to make an arrest. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says they were called to the 16,000 block of Griffin Road for a man that had been shot just after 1230 last night. BCSO says the victim is in his 30s and he was taken to University Hospital in stable condition after being shot in the stomach. The suspect left the scene after he allegedly shot the man. But with the help of the victim, deputies were able to arrest the suspect. Deputies say they arrested a man in his 40s on Tammy K West Street in Somerset. Another story new to our newsroom, San Antonio police are still looking for a woman who disappeared five years ago today. So take a look at your screen. This is 34 year old Crystal Lopez. She was last seen on April 26th in 2017 in the 17,000 block of Henderson Pass. That's on the city's north side near 281 and Loop 1604. Her vehicle was found at her apartment complex where she lived. Her white Maltese dog is also missing. She has wavy shoulder length hair, a pierced nose, pierced ears, and a tattoo on her left wrist with the letter CA. Investigators say they received information that she may be a victim of foul play. So if you have any information that can help police find her, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers, that number on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP. If your information leads to an arrest, you may be eligible for a $5,000 reward. Mark. Thank you very much. Also new this morning, two people in the hospital after a man stabbed two people at the Greyhound bus station over lost luggage. Happened just north of downtown on North St. Mary's, and that's where police say a man in his 30s confronted a bus driver as he left the bathroom and stabbed him in the back. A security guard tried to intervene, and the suspect, we are told, stabbed him in the chest. Both the driver and guard are in the hospital and doing okay. The suspect has been detained and is facing charges. A San Antonio business owner trying to reopen his shop just days after a break in inside Boomtown Sports Cards and Collectibles was a mess this past weekend. The owner of the shop on Bandera Road says the vandals used a brick inside a pillowcase to break the glass and get in. They stole twenty to twenty five thousand dollars worth of memorabilia. I feel like they knew what they were what they knew what they were going to take already because they took certain things. So they might have been here before and kind of scouted the place out because, like I said, they took certain things that are worth, that is worth the most money, you know, the most expensive boxes. And San Antonio police are investigating, but they have not released information on the suspects. The plan is to reopen Boomtown Thursday afternoon. We turn now to the newly revealed evidence in the Rust movie shooting case and new reaction overnight. ABC's Motocosar Abdi has the story. This morning, the family of the woman shot and killed on the set of the Alec Baldwin movie Rust is criticizing the new release of documents from the case, saying the family is, quote, surprised by the decision, given that the investigation is still ongoing and active. I was shot holding the gun, yeah. The trove of evidence just released by authorities includes video of Baldwin speaking with investigators minutes after his prop gun somehow fired a live round, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and wounding the movie's director Joel Souza. Another video shows Baldwin practicing, drawing his revolver before the shooting. Investigators are also seen interviewing Souza from his hospital bed, describing the moment he was shot. Very loud bang and it felt like somebody kicked me in the shoulder. And Baldwin speaking with deputies after leaving the movie set. We're just gonna go over the rights. She's gonna read these to you. So my only question is, am I being charged with something? No, we're just interviewing. Yeah. 
Another body camera video shows the movie's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, in tears, handing authorities the box of supposed dummy rounds for the gun. <laughs> so here's the box that I got them out of. Okay, do one right there. Do one right there, okay? Gutierrez Reed tells investigators she checked all the rounds before loading the gun. The documents also include messages between Gutierrez Reed and prop weapon supplier Seth Kenny. They reveal that Gutierrez Reed asked Kenny for live ammunition for a different movie set. Kenny replies that having live ammunition in a prop gun is a quote serious mistake that always ends in tears. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. The Biden administration trying to get the Supreme Court's go ahead to end a Trump era immigration program that forces some people seeking asylum here in the U.S. to wait in Mexico for their hearings. The justices are hearing arguments today in the administration's appeal of lower court rulings that require immigration officials to reinstate the so-called remain in Mexico policy. Republican led states that sued to keep the program in place say it's helped to reduce the flow of people into the U.S. President Trump launched the Migrant Protection Protocols, as is formally known, in 2019. President Joe Biden suspended it his first day in office. It's called the world's most influential social media platform. Twitter is now being sold to Elon Musk for about $44 million. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO has stressed the importance of free speech recently, and that will likely lead to changes for the social media site. We're going to have more on this story coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. There are new fights over new fees that credit card companies are charging merchants to use their cards. Both Visa and MasterCard recently changed the structure for charges every time a card is swiped. And while both say they're cutting fees for smaller businesses, critics say the vast majority of businesses will see fees go up, which could be passed along to us, the consumer. That's prompted a letter from a bipartisan group of Washington lawmakers demanding a change. And bosses that are demanding that workers return to offices may find they need to find new workers. A new survey from payroll provider ADP now says two thirds of employers would consider looking for new jobs if forced unnecessarily to return to the office full time. How would you like to own a piece of movie history? One of Dorothy's dresses from The Wizard of Oz was donated to the Catholic University of America back in 1973. Then it vanished. That's until a retired professor recently found the dress while sorting through boxes in his office. So now it's going up for auction with proceeds going to a fund, a new film acting program at the university. Pre-sale estimates range from $800,000 to $1.2 million. I've seen one of the originals and ruby slippers on display at the Smithsonian oh, how neat. in Washington, D.C. How neat. It's kind of cool to see that Judy Garland's name It's right pretty there. cool. Yeah. Authentic stuff. 611 right now, 58 degrees. And caught on camera the terrifying moments of a Mustang slamming into a bus filled with children. We're going to have the details. A chilling warning from Russia about the potential for World War III. At ABC's Faith Abu Bay in Washington, the latest in Russia's war in Ukraine coming up. And let's go outside with live cam on your Tuesday morning. Cloudy and cool. Are we sure it's late April? I know. It doesn't feel like it today. It's different out there, that's for sure. We'll check back in with Stephen and check on your morning commute coming up. And welcome back at 615. Now to Russia's brutal attacks in Ukraine and the chilling new warning from the Kremlin to the U.S. and NATO allies about the risk for a nuclear war. Russia's foreign minister says NATO is essentially fighting a proxy war with Russia by supplying military aid to Ukraine, urging the United States to negotiate some kind of, of agreement. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. A good morning. We're waiting for reaction from U.S. officials, but Ukraine's President Zelensky says the fate of global security is being decided in this war. This morning, Russia's foreign minister raising new alarm, saying the conflict in Ukraine could further escalate into World War III. Sergei Lavrov, in an interview with state-run media, warning the risk for a nuclear war is now very significant. Quote, the danger is serious. It is real. It cannot be underestimated adding that he would not like to see the risk be artificially inflated. The chilling warning coming as the U.S. and NATO allies ramp up military aid to Ukraine to fend off the intensifying Russian attacks. We want to see Russia uh, uh, weakened uh, to the degree that it can't uh, do the kinds of things that uh, 
it has done uh, in, in invading Ukraine. During a previously unannounced visit to the war zone, top American officials telling President Zelensky hundreds of millions of dollars in more aid is on the way. Powerful U.S. provided weapons also arriving on the battlefield. The Kremlin cautioning that NATO weapons deliveries are essentially a proxy war against Russia and that its armed forces will consider the warehouses storing the weapons as legitimate targets for attack. Ukraine's foreign minister on Twitter blasting the threats, writing, quote, Russia loses last hope to scare the world off supporting Ukraine. And this only means Moscow senses defeat in Ukraine. And Russia continues suffering massive losses in the face of Ukraine's intense resistance. According to the British Defense Secretary, more than 15,000 Russian troops have died since this invasion. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Let's get a look at the morning commute 35 at Burbank. It has not been looking good out there. We've been seeing these flashing lights for quite a while now. Uh, first responders making their way out there after reports have been coming in of a possible rollover in that area. Not sure again how many vehicles this involves or if the drivers or possible passengers experienced any injuries. We are going to watch it closely, but we are seeing a little bit of a buildup. So the last time we talked to you, there was a different uh, situation we had here on the map, but now we are seeing a little bit more activity. Our map is picking up a few stalls as you can see see right there on your screen, but let's go ahead and bring it into 35 because this is where we see that issue taking place. Uh, initially, I-10 westbound, a US-90 westbound is where we told you it was pinpointed, but we are seeing that buildup in the northbound lanes of I-35 uh, near US-90. So we will watch it closely and look for those alternative routes. But I got to take a drive down over here to the south side because I-35 southbound at Zazamora, we have another crash that was reported by TxDOT. This is being reported on the frontage road. Now I'll talk to our friends at TransGuide, find out exactly Exactly what the conditions look like right now, but we have been seeing a few more droplets out there on the camera, as you can see right now from this TransGuide camera. Again, first responders uh, 35 at Burbank. As a quick reminder, grab your phones, open your camera app, and scan this QR code that is now on your screen. This will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that will bring you the latest information that could have on possible closures in your area or any incidents that could impact your morning commute. But let's check in with Justin for the morning forecast. Stephen, thank you, sir. We're still watching some good downpours, especially on the northeast side of San Antonio. I want to zoom in a little bit closer to this activity you see here around Shirts and Selma and then a little bit closer to New Braunfels. Now, this is an area that saw quite a bit of rain yesterday, so it's possible that uh, we could see some street flooding in these areas here over the next hour as this area of rain is just sort of sitting here. Let's uh, stop the radar and uh, we'll take a look at some of the uh, the rainfall totals that we've seen over the last. Uh, let's go 24 hours here and uh, we can see uh, just how much rain we've seen. Or maybe we'll try 12 hours if it'll work for me. There we go. Uh, and you can see kind of the pockets of where we've seen some heavier rain and that's been around shirts and Selma and as I mentioned uh, JBSA. Uh, Randolph, we've seen some some good rain there. The totals have been pretty significant. So if you uh, query some of these, we're talking uh, over three inches of, of rain in some of these spots. So that again could cause some street flooding. I'd say Garden Ridge, between Garden Ridge and Shirts, and maybe over towards New Braunfels. Just something to watch. Let's switch it back to the radar and take a look at some of the other areas that are uh, still seeing rain at this hour. And uh, that includes the uh, eastern side of Bear County. Seeing a nice downpour here. St. Hedwig over to Lavernia. This is headed towards Lavernia, by the way, slowly but surely. So you can expect some heavy rain there along Highway 87. And just to the south of 87 around China Grove, seeing another spot there. And then south of Elmendorf, some pretty heavy rain. Uh, southeastern por portions of Bear County. And then just some spotty showers elsewhere. But starting to see things intensify a little bit up there. Uh, around the rim, around I-10 and 1604 UTSA, seeing some good rain there. So the idea here is that we're going to still see some spotty downpours throughout the rest of this morning. It'll be hit or miss, uh, but as you look at the forecast, uh, it, it does show that. And then by 10 o'clock, maybe a little bit less activity, and then we'll trend downward as we head towards the afternoon. Still some spotty showers through 5 o'clock, but maybe starting to see some clearing. Here's how it looks in our 12-hour forecast, 61 by 9 a.m., 30% chance of rain. Then we'll bring that down to a 20% chance by noontime, 64. And we're only topping out at about 70 degrees today. So it'll be a cool day, mostly cloudy at 5 o'clock, and rain chances really start to go away. We did pick up 7 tenths of an inch yesterday. We may get to add to that today. So 
So far this month, about an inch of rain. We're still about an inch below average. But yesterday's rainfall did help a lot. It was great to see and great to see that it was fairly widespread around the area. 57 right now, rain coming down at the airport. 50s and 60s for the most part. And as I mentioned, it, it's not going to be a big warm up this afternoon, so fairly chilly at this hour. Futurecast shows that we'll see warmer conditions by tomorrow. That's 5 o'clock Wednesday. Same story on Thursday, almost hot. But it's uh, Friday into Saturday that we get a storm system starting to sink south, and that may provide a few more rain chances. Not as great as what we've seen the last couple of days, but a 20% chance Saturday afternoon. Seven day forecast 80 tomorrow. There's your warm up 85 Thursday, close to 90 by Friday and into the weekend. So it'll feel more like April by the end of the work week, guys. But today, cloudy, cool, and somewhat damp, especially this morning. All right, but a break in temperatures at least. Yes. Thank you, Justin. 58 degrees. Wow. Okay, thank you, Justin. 622 on your Tuesday morning. And the NFL draft is set to kick off on Thursday, and you can watch it right here on KSAT 12. After the break, we're going to tell you where the Cowboys and Texans might use their picks. I've got moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzy. Things are getting clearer. I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's on me. Nothing and me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is everything. Achieve clearer skin with Sky Rizzy. Three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin in four months. Of those, nearly nine out of ten sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzy is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see nothing in a different way. It's my moment, so I just gotta say, nothing is everything. Rizzi may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Nothing is everything. Talk to your dermatologist about Sky Rizzi. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL holds its draft starting Thursday night at 7 o'clock, live right here on ABC and KSAT 12. Cowboys' first pick will be number 24 overall. So while anything can happen draft night, most analysts believe the Cowboys will use that pick to select an offensive lineman after losing Connor Williams to the Dolphins and Lael Collins to the Cincinnati Bengals. This year, Cowboys have nine picks overall. Meanwhile, Texans fans should be super excited because the Texans are loaded with picks to help rebuild their team after winning only four games last year. Houston will have 11 picks overall. That includes the third overall pick and the 13th overall selection. Like the Cowboys, the Texans have needs on, on the offensive line to help protect quarterback Davis Mills going forward. So it's already draft time. I know. It feels like the season just ended recently. I agree. <laughs> And the weather doesn't help either. It's yeah, like right. Winter time Very right confusing. Now. <laughs> time now, 626 and 57 degrees for now. Coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, Max Massey will be meeting with program directors from SAS, a Texas-based nonprofit and the largest distributor of free school supplies in South Texas. Last week, the program gave grants benefiting STEM programs and curriculum for 10 San Antonio schools. And later this morning, Max is going to talk more about the Little Locker Project and how else they help students thrive. Plus this. Also ahead, yeah, on GMSA at 6.30, we're going to have the very latest on an overnight stabbing incident at a bus station just north of downtown San Antonio. Investigators saying the argument all started over some lost luggage. And checking Trans Guide, flashing lights down there at 10 and 35. We'll try to find out what's going on. Stephen Cavazos is on it. And we still have showers and storms in parts of the KSAT 12 viewing area. We'll get you updated coming up at the bottom of the hour. We'll be back. A horrifying bus crash caught on camera. We're going to have the details just ahead. Outside with live cam, we're waking up to a few more showers and storms out there, depending on where you are at. As a matter of fact, we have drops on the lens out there by San Antonio International Airport. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And it's actually cooler. Also, when you step out the door, you will notice that right away. Yeah, that's the number that's really throwing us off right now. Yeah. Not the case app, but the 57 degree <laughs> part. I know, and yeah. it's April, late April at that. Uh, it's cool. It's cloudy. It's somewhat damp. So I would recommend a light jacket as mm -hmm. you get out the door and umbrella too because we're going to see these showers stick around for another couple of hours. We're seeing some pretty good downpours in spots and these aren't moving very much so it's conceivable we could get some minor street flooding in places like Garden Ridge up towards Selma and Shirts. This is where 
We've seen some pretty persistent downpours and the rainfall rates are still pretty good at this hour. Also seeing some activity eastern parts of Bear County. This particular downpour uh, right around China Grove has not moved much either. And then we have another downpour there just south of Elmendorf with some others trying to pop up there on the city's northwest side. Uh, again, it's going to be hit or miss, but uh, there are going to be some spots where there will be some ponding on the roadways, some puddles here and there too. Uh, again, especially as you go up I-35 coming out of San Antonio towards uh, New Braunfels. That's where we're seeing some of the heaviest rain at this hour. All right, temperatures, uh, Steph and Mark pointed out, it's chilly out there, 57 degrees at the airport, 59 New Braunfels, 56 Kerrville. And really, with the cloud cover today, and with the potential for rain early, it's not going to warm up a whole lot. We may get up to 70 if we're lucky. Uh, 57 Comfort, 53 right now in Las Maples. And the forecast for today keeps us in the 60s this morning. Some chances of rain, we start to taper that off a little bit, those we get towards the lunch hour and then this afternoon for sure. 67 at 2 p.m. And by 5 p.m., maybe a few peaks of sun. Temperatures again make it up close to 70 degrees. It gets much warmer after this. We have a look at that seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. Well, let's get over to Steven now with a check of your traffic authority. How are things looking? Well, Justin, it seems like every half hour that we talk about traffic, something new to report. So we mentioned 35 southbound at Zazamora. I talked to our friends over at Transguide a few minutes ago. They were able to show us the conditions out there, and you can see that the roads are wet, but we are seeing some flashing lights out there on the frontage road. Uh, one of the shots that we saw a little bit earlier did show some of the flashing lights under the bridge. I am mean, keeping an eye on it, but haven't really seen so much of a slowdown happen, but you can see that the roads are wet out there, and we want our drive Drivers to take it easy this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and take you right to the map because although that is being reported on the frontage road, our map is picking up that slowdown here off of south, the southbound lanes near Somerset Road, and that is where that crash has been reported. I-35 South and near Zazamoda Street, not far from Somerset, so expect some slowdowns this morning. And we are still seeing flashing lights over here off I-10 westbound at US 90. Forgot to change that location, but it is 35 northbound near US 90. So another area you have to watch carefully at out there this morning. Let's go ahead and show you the map because we are seeing also stalls showing to be a big issue this morning. Count of them probably about maybe seven have been reported so far. We're going to get to those locations a little bit later on, but you can see on the map we have them there along 35 410 as well as 1604. Now those travel times. If you are traveling into San Antonio, you can expect some delays. We are seeing a 30 minute drive time already in those southbound lanes from 35 to New Braunfels, so hopefully people are taking it slow. We are also seeing a 30 minute drive time. 281 southbound coming in from Bolverde and a 25 minute drive time Lavernia from 87. So we can ex probably expect to see these uh, slowdown times really just continue to stretch there as the morning does roll on. But another area again, 35 southbound at Zazamoda. The morning is already riddled with problems, but we'll get you through it. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a bus passenger who is upset about lost luggage has now lost his freedom. San Antonio police say he lashed out against a bus driver and security guard, stabbing both of them at the downtown Greyhound station. Now that's at the corner of North St. Mary's and East Martin. Katrina Weber has a story from the scene and tells us that both victims are being treated at a hospital. Based on what police told us, both the driver and the security guard were stable as they left for a hospital this morning. Now they tell us that the upset passenger first lashed out against the bus driver and then also stabbed the security guard when he tried to intervene. Now this happened shortly before 3 o'clock this morning. Police say again that that passenger was upset about his luggage being lost. For some reason, he attacked the bus driver as he walked out of a restroom. Police say when the security guard tried to step in the middle, he also was stabbed in his chest. The bus driver was stabbed in his back. Both of them were stable as they were taken to a hospital. Police took that suspect into custody right away. They say he's in his 30s and he will face criminal charges. Now, it doesn't appear that this uh, affected any bus service long term because right now it does appear that things in there are back to normal. Reporting from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. There are several ways you can help the San Antonio community today, from a daycare that was destroyed by a fire needing child care items donated, to a blood drive in honor of a well-known high school athlete who died of cancer. Sarah Costa joins us live here in the studio with the latest on ways you can help out those with donations. Hey, Sarah.
Good morning, Mark. It's a story we first brought you on GMSA back on Friday, April 15th. Our Katrina Weber was live at that location all morning. Just take a look at that video from that morning. You can see how horrific those flames were when that fire broke out at the daycare center. The firefighters having to fight it defensively from above. And that fire burning the Guardian Angel Child Development Center down to its studs. The daycare center on Pleasanton Road has been open since the 1980s. The owner, Eli Geta, vows to keep it open and continue to serve the community in honor of his late wife, who died four years ago. He says in order to do so, he needs the help from San Antonio residents. So he has already found a temporary location at 102 West White Avenue. But the center really needs child care items and supplies to keep it going. Going. Of course, all of their items destroyed in that fire. So just take a look at your screen. They are asking for any kind of toys, storage bins, shelves, kids' tables and chairs, swings and bouncers and play mats, some baby toys. These items can be dropped off at the new temporary location. And here's another way you can help out by rolling up your sleeve and donating blood in honor of Bryce Wisdom, a Judson High School football player that died of kidney cancer back in July of 2020. Bryce died at 17 years old. His story captivated the San Antonio community. The motto, Bryce Strong, touched hearts and minds across the nation, even reaching the ears of his beloved Seattle Seahawks. So today's Bryce Strong blood drive will be at Bryce's alma mater, Judson High School. It starts at noon and goes until 7 p.m. Blood is desperately needed. Right now, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Centers they says they only have a three-day supply left. Type O blood is only at a two-day supply, short of that seven-day supply that is needed. So you can either schedule an appointment at donor.southtexasblood.org or walk-in appointments are also available. Stephanie? Hey, Sarah. An execution delayed for a South Texas woman, Melissa Lucio, will have a chance to show a court new evidence in her case. Her son spoke after an appeals court granted the stay. We are, we're just one big old team, you know, putting up the fight for my mother, Melissa Elizabeth Lucio. Today, we got the great news. She got a state of, execu state of execution and uh, she won't be heading to Hudsonville Wednesday. Lucio's execution was scheduled for tomorrow, and that's after a jury convicted her in the death of her two-year-old daughter in Harlingen. But there are growing doubts in that verdict among some of the jurors who sentenced her to death. Support from celebrities and lawmakers have led to national coverage of the case, and now a lower court will review claims of new evidence in the case that could exonerate her. Today is the last day you can request a mail-in ballot for the May 7th election. During the last election, thousands of mail-in ballots were rejected because they were not done properly. Bear County elections officials are hoping that does not happen to get. To get more information, you can scan the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you to our website and everything you need to know about the upcoming election. Early voting runs until May 3rd. Polls will be, polls rather, will be open from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening. And now to billionaire Elon Musk buying Twitter. Reaction has been pouring in overnight. Critics worry that Musk will have too much power, and others are praising the deal, saying it will protect free speech online. ABC's Faith Abube has more. This morning, the debate is raging over how Elon Musk taking over Twitter could change social media. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO promising to redefine free speech online, open up the flow of information and be more inclusive after criticizing how Twitter currently moderates messages it views as hateful or disinformation. Musk tweeting, quote, I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that's what free speech means. Among his supporters, Twitter shareholders who receive $54.20 for every share they own. That's nearly 40% more than what the stock was worth earlier this month. For a lot of shareholders, this is kind of a, a, a quick win. Musk hasn't said whether he'll allow banned users like former President Trump back on the site. But Trump says even if he's reinstated, he'll be staying off Twitter in favor of his own platform, Truth Social. One of Twitter's founders and its former CEO, Jack Dorsey, writing, quote, it has been owned by Wall Street and the ad model. Taking it back from Wall Street is the correct first step. But many others are highly critical of the deal. Human rights groups worrying the hate speech could find a new home on the platform. Others worry the deal will hand the world's richest person too much power. Senator Elizabeth Warren tweeting, quote, billionaires like Elon Musk play by a different set of rules than everyone else, accumulating power for their own gain.
In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And caught on camera, a terrifying video shows the moment a bus filled with middle school students is hit by a man driving a Mustang. Investigators say that driver was racing another car. And take a look at your screen. You can see the impact. This all happened back on February 23rd in Albuquerque, New Mexico. 23 students were on the bus at the time. Seven were taken to the hospital and two of those students needed surgery for fractured bones. Police say the driver who hit the bus was going more than 110 miles per hour at one point. That driver is now facing charges. 641, about 57 degrees, if you can believe it. Yeah, 57 degrees for now. And just ahead on GMSA, the, we introduce you to a pediatric pancreatitis, pancreatitis survivor who continues to fight for her life and the lives of others with her condition. Quarter to seven, welcome back to GMSA. Rebecca Taylor was diagnosed with pediatric pancreatitis when she was seven years old. Shortly after, she had her pancreas removed. The doctors told her family she would not survive and she nearly didn't. She's 19, year olds, 19 years old now and has raised over $2 million to help other children with her disease. Sarah Costa spoke to Rebecca about her nonprofit, Rebecca's Wish, and how it is a, that's, uh, that's a purpose that keeps her going. Sarah, what an absolutely remarkable woman. She truly is incredible and she really inspired me. She has spent so much of her life in and out of the hospital, yet still manages to stay positive and focused on helping others combat pediatric pancreatitis. For 12 years, Rebecca Taylor has been fighting for her life every day thanks to pediatric pancreatitis. There is no cure for the painful disease. She has been on a feeding tube most of her life, had her pancreas removed, and is extremely high risk when it comes to any infection or other illness. 120 surgeries and procedures, um, seven and a half organs missing that have been removed. Over 1,300 days in a hospital, checked into a hospital. When I spoke to Rebecca, she had just had special permission to leave the hospital to do at home treatment so she could go back to College Station to finish out her freshman year at Texas A&M University. I'm just so happy to be at school right now. That's all I can think about. And I'm going to continue to just choose to focus on that. She is majoring in biomedical engineering and hopes to go to medical school to find a cure for the disease that has plagued her, but most importantly to her, to help cure the hundreds of other children who suffer from it. If I can't help myself, I can at least help hundreds of other kids through this. It's why in 2017, with the help of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, she held a gala fundraiser. That fundraiser has turned into a full-blown nonprofit called Rebecca's Wish that has raised more than $2 million. We are doing research. We're helping with the National Pancreas Foundation and Mission Cure to try to get the first drug targeted therapies for the pancreas. As hard as it is for Christian to see her daughter in constant physical pain and at times be apart from her other two sons and husband while caring for Rebecca in the hospital, she too remains resilient, knowing the work from Rebecca's wish will help thousands of other families fight pediatric pancreatitis. Seeing that their lives don't have to be what ours was 12 years ago makes us beyond happy. And you can help Rebecca's wish by attending her latest event, Wild for R Wishes. It's happening this Saturday, April 30th at the San Antonio Zoo from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. You're, you'll not only enjoy those rare animal encounters and treats, but also meet and support those pancreatitis patients and their families sponsored by the nonprofit and this event. And we have all those details right now on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for this story. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Thank you. And I just saw flashing lights out there at I-35 and Zarzamar Road. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, we are tracking three crashes this morning. Let's get right to it. 35 southbound at Zazamoto. We told you about this a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and take you to the map. We're seeing a slowdown more, though, on the northbound lanes. However, we, those issues are starting to pick up. We still have this crash reported off I-35 at US-90, and that is where we're also seeing that slowdown getting onto I-10. Take it slow this morning, and you can expect to see some slowdowns here as well. 281 southbound at Grayson Street. It is not looking good as we are now in morning rush, Justin. Thank you, Stephen. Let's uh, go to radar. We still have uh, quite a few downpours around the area. They really have not moved much. So we're going to start to become a little concerned here for some minor street flooding, especially in places like Shirts, where we've picked up a lot of rain around Garden Ridge. And there is a flood advisory. This is going to go until 915 for parts of Comal County. And that's because this is an area where we've seen quite a bit of rain. 
no rain at the moment, uh, but it has accumulated over the uh, well last 24 hours or so, and that's why, why that flood advisory is in place. As we look at the 24-hour uh, rainfall totals here, you can see that there is quite a bullseye right over that area, and uh, that's why that flood advisory has uh, been put into effect. Let's look at uh, some of the estimates. Radar estimates close to 7 inches of rain, which is great rainfall, but again, that's going to cause a few flooding issues uh, in that uh, vicinity this morning. Let's go back to radar. And yes, the rain has moved out of the area where we have the flood advisory, but uh, still seeing some pretty good rain again around the Garden Ridge area right there along I-35 between Selma and as you get up into New Braunfels. And then some heavier cells just north of I-10, uh, right to the south and the east of Randolph. And then around St. Hedwig and Lavernia, some pretty heavy cells here. Nothing severe. This is just good heavy rain. But as I mentioned, with this not moving very much, there is going to be some street flooding. I would say maybe around China Grove along 87 there. A lot of puddles on the roads. And then here around San Antonio, the rain is not as heavy, but we are seeing some pockets of moderate rain, especially along I-10. And as you get up towards uh, I-10 and 1604 as well, seeing some rain. And this is all tracking off to the east and southeast. So we're going to continue to see that chance for some rain throughout the rest of this morning and even into the early afternoon hours. We can't rule it out. This is a look at the forecast. This is 10 a.m. Then we'll go towards the noon hour. Still some showers here and there, but I think as we get towards the late afternoon and evening, rain chances start to come down some. 60 degrees at 8 o'clock, 30% chance of rain. We'll bring it down to a 20% chance of rain by midday and then by the afternoon, maybe a few peaks of sun. We're only topping out at close to 70. So it is going to be sort of a coolish day. You'll want the maybe light jacket with you as you head out the door this morning. 57, rain coming down at the airport. A lot of 50s on the map. 56 Bulverde, 57 Comfort, 57 Port SA, 62 there at Stinson. Our extended forecast, yes, 70 today, but 60s for most of the day. 80 on Wednesday, there's your big warm-up. 85 Thursday, 89 on Friday. And we will add in some small rain chances over the weekend, 20% chance on Saturday, but it becomes more hot and humid. We'll continue to keep an eye on the radar today. Have that KSAT weather app with you. You can check the radar there, and we'll also send you some updates as uh, more downpours develop, guys. All right, we'll watch out for it. Thank you, Justin. 651, about 57 degrees. And with the cases of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery, and countless others, racism continues to be a hot button topic. Tomorrow on GMSA, what can be done to promote healing? Outside with live cam as you're waking up on this Tuesday morning. The sun is coming up over a somewhat soggy Alamo City. We'll be right back. 655, let's get a look at the roads right now. It looks like a school bus is having some trouble here at 281 at Grayson. Now, we do know a crash has been reported in that area, and you can see that we do have first responders and another vehicle off on the shoulder lane with that school bus, so watch out. We'll find out more details as morning does go on, but we're still watching this crash off I-35 southbound at Zazamoto, where we are also seeing a slowdown. It does appear this crash off of I-35 near North US-90 has cleared, but still seeing that slowdown in the traffic of the northbound lanes or westbound lanes of I-10, so watch out. Out. Drive up over here shows that crash again 281 southbound at Grayson Street. It has been a busy morning and you can also expect some slowdowns. Justin. Stephen, thank you. The radar is still fairly active this morning. You see some of those downpours that really aren't moving all that much. So there could be some minor street flooding, especially east side of Bear County up towards Garden Ridge shirts. Otherwise, just some spotty showers here around San Antonio. We're going to keep in a 30% chance rain early in the day, 20% chance this afternoon, and it stays cool. Highs only around 70 today. Have a terrific Tuesday. Yeah, the temperatures will be nice. We'll see you back here at 9.